pies. Oh, yeah. They all look so yeah. delicious. Yeah. But some pies aren't all there, you know. What, puffed up to be? Yeah. yeah. That's what Ross discovered when they collected hundreds of people's thoughts on pies. Pies. So here's new uh, Ross stew pots. That's right. Deep, deep pastry pots full of, you know. What? Meat. Meat, yeah. Vegetable stew. Yeah. On top yeah. with a golden brown pastry lid. Yeah. yeah. New Ross stew pots. I mean, they're deep enough to, uh, Dig into, dig into, dig into, dig into. Yeah. Because with the uh, Ross, you're the boss. Cadbury's Flake, the crumbliest, flakiest milk chocolate in the world. There's sunshine in this week's TV Times. With holiday comment, programs, and up to £150 cash if you book your holiday through TV Times. All over the south and southeast, drilling for oil and gas is getting underway. Large oil reserves are waiting to be tapped. Will the south strike it rich in the new oil game? Facing South investigates tonight at 10.30. You're watching Television South. Now we join ITN for the news. It's 10 o'clock. Mr. Britain goes, I don't have my colleague's confidence. Mrs. Thatcher says, I hope you will return. The Murdoch Union strike, the whopping plant will work. One pro-Dublin victory stops the Unionist sweep. And the teacher's strike may be over at last. Good evening. The Trade and Industry Secretary, Mr. Leon Britton, resigned tonight, despite Mrs. Thatcher's efforts to persuade him to stay. He told her, it has become clear to me I no longer command the full confidence of my colleagues. In these circumstances, my continued membership of your government will be a source of weakness rather than strength. Mrs. Thatcher replied, It was my wish that you should remain as a member of the Cabinet, but I have to respect your decision. Mr. Britton's resignation leaves Mrs. Thatcher alone to defend herself in the emergency debate on Monday afternoon. Mr. Britton decided to go as a result of the admission that his department planned the leaking to the press of a key document at the height of the Westland controversy. The document was damaging to Mr. Michael Heseltine's campaign and helpful to Mr. Britton. The Prime Minister tried to protect Mr. Britton in the Commons yesterday, but failed to persuade enough Conservative MPs that he had acted properly. Mr. Britton's resignation, after that of Mr. Heseltine, means that Mrs. Thatcher has lost two of her most senior ministers in two weeks. Mr. Neil Kinnock called Mr. Britton tonight a casualty of this whole dirty business. Tonight, Mr. Britton was on his way home to Yorkshire. With Westminster 200 miles behind him, Leon Britton was putting a brave face on it, chatting with his press secretary. But it was still just one hour since the official announcement of his resignation, and he was too shattered to talk. Can I ask you why you decided to resign at this point in the proceedings? Uh, I don't think I wish to give an interview just at the moment. Thank you very much. I gather that Margaret Thatcher tried to persuade you to stay. What was she saying to you on those arguments? Can you tell me what your plans are now, sir? I would have thought, Mr. Good. For the next half hour, he composed his thoughts, preparing himself for the inevitable pack of pressmen waiting at York Station. He was honouring an engagement booked months ago to attend a young Conservatives dinner in Leeds and, flanked firmly by his staff, he at first steadfastly ignored questions about his resignation, then paused to explain his action today. Well, the, I, I think any minister has got to have the full confidence of his colleagues. I didn't have any doubt about that until this morning. This morning I made inquiries, I discussed the matter with friends and colleagues, and I came to the conclusion that I didn't have the full confidence without which you can't really do the job. So I asked to see the Prime Minister and explained to her that for that reason 
I was tendering my resignation. In her statement, she said that she tried to persuade you to stay. What arguments did she put to you? I don't think I should uh, go into what I said or what she said in conversation. The correspondence has been published and I think speaks for itself. The Prime Minister also said she'd like to see you return to high office soon. How do you see your future? Well, I was very touched by what she said, but I think we must deal with one day at a time. What would you like to happen in the future? I think that we must deal with one day at a time and I've given you my comments as far as today's events are concerned. All he would say about his future career was that he will continue his programme of constituency work in North Yorkshire, returning there tonight and conducting his regular surgeries over the weekend. Anne Lucas, News at 10, York.